care the best we can to make sure our client in this particular case doesn't get physically harmed through a virus, all right? The most common time you see this, and there have been several lawsuits, so that should perk, you, perk your ears up a little bit, where a listing agent told their seller, hey, the price of the house is 140, and it should have been 160. The agent did their CMA wrong, and the seller has actually sued their own agent because you left money on the table. You told me 140, should have been 160. I got cheated out of 20 grand. So there have been several of those lawsuits. So you must exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure your client does not get harmed. That's our first one, care. Obedience, you must do what your client says to do. Unless, unless it's illegal, unethical, or immoral. And those last two are on you guys. All right. So if your client says, I don't want to show the house Saturday because I've got my mother-in-law coming in, you would say, okay, we can block all showings on Saturday. That's a legal uh, request from your client. But they can't say something like, hey, man, we've got lead-based paint, but don't tell anybody or we'll never get this sold. Can't do that. That's a federal law that we disclose it. So that would be an example of, I can't follow that command from you. That violates federal law, I can't do it. Someone could say, hey, I wanna sell my house, but I don't want you to sell to any of those people. Uh, dude, I can't do that, that violates fair housing. You know, hey, don't sell it to the Martians, I don't like Martians. Sorry, that's a protected class, which we'll get to. That would be an example of, you can't follow that law either. But if they said, I'm going out of town this weekend, on a honeymoon, don't call me. I'll be back Monday. Don't call me this weekend. Okay, I can do that. That's the obedience portion. Loyalty. Your loyalty lies to your client above your own loyalty. You see this play out a lot of times when the buyer wants to see five houses. Remember that BAC we talked about, Sarah? And we said we give half of it away? I could decide to only give 10% away. So now when you're looking at these five listings and one of them says, I get 3%, I get 3%, I get 3%, and I get 1%. Which one do you think you're gonna take the, the client to first? Most humans would go, Oh, I'm going to take them to the one I get paid the most. No, the, cl the client's loyalty above yours. That client may look at that house and go, dude, that's the perfect house. I want that one. Even though it's only paying 1% to you. Okay, let's go look at it. Because his loyalty lies above yours. You have to do what's best for him, not you. <coughs> <clears throat> disclosure you must disclose everything you know about the deal if i heard my buyer is looking at uh christina's listing but i heard her sellers going into foreclosure because her neighbor's aunt's brother's cousin is my sister's best friend i would tell my buyer Hey, dude, I heard through the grapevine that seller's going into foreclosure. Let's lowball him. He needs the money. Because that's something I know about the deal. All right. Now, you can't use that. Well, let's skip that for a second. We'll come back to that. 
So I have to disclose everything I know about the deal. If you work for the seller, you must also disclose all of the known defects in the property. You would disclose those up front. Come on in, bring your buyer. But I just want to tell you, apparently we've got a hole in the roof. Do you want to continue to negotiate? And you go, no, we're out. Okay, I just saved this both the time and the effort. Or you could say, yeah, my guy's a roofer. We're still interested. Okay, just wanted you to know. So as a listing agent, you must, under penalty of law, disclose all known defects. I know we got lead base paint. I know there's a hole in the roof. And I know that there's gophers out in the grass. I would disclose that to all the buyers prior to them coming in. That is to reduce you guys going and having a home inspection and wasting your money and finding out there's a hole in the roof and go, dude, why didn't you tell us? So part of the disclosure from the seller side is we must disclose all of the known defects. I also would disclose what I know about the buyer. Let's flip that scenario. Suppose I get an offer from Erin and I know her buyer's in foreclosure. We may not accept that offer because we know she's got financial problems. I would tell my client, hey dude, I saw Aaron's client, the buyer. I saw their name in the newspaper. They're not gonna be around for more. So we may not accept that offer. Did anyone else lose him? Everybody else did? Okay. If this is the future, this is sucking. <laughs> All right. Are you guys there? Yes, you're back. <laughs> hey. I don't even see him. All of a sudden, mine said connection lost. Huh. All right. It popped back up. Where did you guys stop? So we've got the six, right? The four we've talked about, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure. Are we cool with that? Yeah. All right. Now, before we talk about the last two, and I lost my damn whiteboard. Before we talk about the last two, I want to flip over on page 149. Page 149, the termination of agency. Charles, are you there? Well, it says we've got Charles, but I'm not sure. in webcam i'm here you can hear me i can hear you sir all right cool 
<coughs> so we're talking about agency currently. I'm okay. on page 149 because what I want to talk about right now is how do we end this agency? We have created an agency by signing a listing agreement or we have created it by signing a buyer's agency. So you're either helping the seller or the buyer, all right? Now, how do we end it? So let's talk about, there are seven ways to end agency. It can't go on forever. So the first way is obviously the best. It's called completion, meaning we sold, listed the house, we got a buyer, we sold the house, the property transfers, all right? And when does the deed transfer? Delivered and accepted. So they reach up and they take that deed. Remember, and I told you property transfers. Well, guess what else happens? Agency terminates. Completion, that's what it says in the book. So once we complete the deal, agency's terminated. So technically, watch this. Technically, you walk into closing and you've got your client with you. You close, the title transfers. Literally, when you walk out the door, they are now a customer again because the agency terminated the second that deed transferred. We all still treat them like a client because you get in the parking lot and you go, hey, closing went well, here's my car, tell your friends. But legally, they're now back to a customer again because completion, number one, terminates this agency. That's one way to do it. Death, death of either party terminates a listing. But wait, there's more. That is the death of who? Of our client. Or? You, your client. Me. Oh. Not you. Remember, who's the agent in this deal? Me. Yeah. Why? Because it's all mine. My listing, my client, my commission, all of it. If you were to die, I'm sorry, we'll go to the funeral, but we will, I can literally just move that from Lashana and give it to Ross. All right. So death of either party terminates a listing. But the parties are the client or me, not you guys, because the state only sees me as the one agent in this company. All right. If it was one of you, I could literally just transfer it to another person helping me because it's the death of me or the client that terminates listing. If the property gets destroyed, tornado, fire, earthquake, bad divorce fight, whatever. Did you guys hear about that? Probably didn't. About four or five years ago, a couple were getting divorced and the husband got pissed. He owned a contracting company. He went and got his bulldozer and bulldozed the entire house. He said, if she wants half, she can have half of that. He bulldozed the house. The contract could expire, all right? Indiana does not allow perpetual listings. It has a start date and an end date. When that end date comes along, the agency terminates unless you go back out to your client and get them to re-sign a new one. It cannot self-renew, all right? There is no perpetual listings. Starts January the 1st, ends July the 1st. I would have to go back out to my client and say, 
I need you to re-sign a new listing for 